took our break. Now let's come back and let's take a look at how we can use this to do some throughput. Or yeah, let's talk about the roaming test first. We'll take a look at the roaming test, and then after we do the roaming test, then we'll get into iPerf because I know everyone's excited about the iPerf side of things. So here's the roaming test. So the idea with the roaming test is that if you want to take this particular piece of equipment out, be able to walk through a building and make sure that if you have a client that's going to be moving around the building, that they can roam from one access point to another. So the first thing we need to do is pick a target to ping. So you want to pick a target that will reply to a ping. In this case, we're going to choose our default gateway. Now you could pick your DHCP server, your DNS servers, uh, some target out there, whatever you want. So I'm going to hit apply. Now at this point, this is going out and it's pinging that particular device. So you can see we've locked in on channel 36. Uh, it tells us that our target is our default gateway. Our AP name is Mike Desk. So this is a nice one because it shows the alias name up there. This AP name will change as we move around. Now, if uh, we see our signal strength right here. Now, as we move away from that access point, we're going to see that signal strength start to drop off. Now, because I can't just grab all this stuff and just go wandering off during this presentation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a quick little video that we shot at a customer site where we took the analyzer and walked around. Hopefully you can see the, the screen changing. One of the things I'll recommend with GoToWebinar is that you'll see that there is a bar that divides the screen from the video. You can move that back and forth and you can make the video on your screen larger. So when we go to this little video clip, maybe a little easier to uh, see what's going on if uh, you move that over. And let me just make sure that I've turned the audio off on this. There's really not anything to hear. So I'm going to uh, select that clip. Okay. So what you're seeing in this clip is me. I've got a GoPro camera strapped to my chest. And we're walking around with this uh, AirCheck G2. And if you look on the screen right there, you'll notice that as we're walking, that signal is going down and it continues to go down and down. And what we would see is that our ping loss starts going up. Then all of a sudden you're going to see a vertical bar appear and now our signal goes back up again. So what's happened here is that we have roamed to another access point. So in this case, we're walking down this stairwell in the building. And as we go through each floor, we find that our signal gets weaker and weaker, and then we roam to another access point. Now in that case, we roamed again. We see that our signal starts dropping down. And what we're gonna find, I believe in this case, is that we don't roam to another access point. So right here, our signal has gone way down and we're not roaming. So this would tell us that on this particular floor in that stairwell, we have a dead spot. We have a spot where we've gotten too far away from our access point to get a good signal, but not close enough to anything else to roam to it. Now, eventually, we're going to come down there, and right there we roamed to the next access point. And up at the top, it's showing us where we're roaming. So this is a great tool. This roaming feature is a great feature for being able to go in and see, uh, you know, what does our connectivity look like? What does our signal strength look like? So when it comes to, you know, going in and being able to tell that kind of information, this is what we can do with that. And we ran into a problem at this facility where devices, uh, the access points were booting us off. And so as a result, we ran into issues when we went to roam from one AP to another. Okay, so I'm going to switch back over to me. But there's an example of how we can take this tool out into the field and use it to roam from one network to another. Okay. Now, if we come in here at the bottom and we tap on log, 
This shows us that log as we're roaming around. So what I found in this case at this site was we were having trouble connecting on the, on the guest network. And when we would go in and connect on the guest network, it would just boot us off. When we went in and looked at the log, we saw that as soon as we connected, we got a deauth from the access point. We'd connect deauth. If we rebooted the access point, we wouldn't get the deauthorizations anymore. So what this was telling us was that something was going on with that access point. So we found if we rebooted it, it would work for a while. But when we'd go to roam, as we roamed away from an access point where we rebooted, we wouldn't roam to another one unless we rebooted that one. And then it would work. Turned out to be a firmware upgrade. It was one of those cases where there was some issue with that particular firmware version that was causing problems. So going in and taking a look at this log starts giving us a very good picture of exactly what's going on. Okay. So one of the questions, how do I get to that roaming option? So let's go back. So what I did was I came in here and we'll just step back a little bit more and I selected the Netgear 77 5G network and I clicked on connect. So we're going to reconnect to that network. Now anytime you connect to a network, once that connection process is complete, if you go down to the bottom of the screen, you're going to see that you have roam. If you have, uh, if you don't have version two, then you're going to see roaming and log. If you have version two, you're going to see roaming, iperf, and log. Now, how do you say, well, Mike, how do I upgrade to version two? Well, the first thing you need to do is have gold support on your AirCheck G2. Now, if you have gold support on your AirCheck G2, then you can go out to enterprise.netscout.com and go out to the support site, log in, and download that version. Now, the way that we want to upgrade from version one to version two is first go out and download the AirCheck G2 version two manager software. And we're gonna bring that up in a little bit, but that is the Windows-based software package that we use for going out and taking a look at the session files and working with those. We need to have the most current version of the manager software loaded before we can upload the newest version of the firmware. After you've downloaded and installed the uh, newest version of the software, then what we can do is we can go in and we can download the newest version of the firmware. Once you've downloaded the newest version of the firmware, you can connect your AirCheck G2 to that PC using this, the USB cable, and you can upload that firmware to the AirCheck G2. Same hardware platform, it's just that what you're gonna find is that you've got this new software and it's gonna work really well for you. So once we've connected to that network, tells us which AP we've connected to. Uh, now I can click on roaming test. I select a device to ping. I hit apply and now our roaming test is running. So select a network, connect to the network. Roaming is gonna appear at the bottom, select a device to ping and now we've got our roaming test working. So I'm gonna hit stop I go back. Okay, now this is, you know, I, I'm, I'm a geek at heart. This is the kind of stuff I get excited about. iPerf. Now I've used this on my phone. I've carried it around. We've done testing. But I wanted it all in one package. So I was really excited to hear that when they were, they were coming out with version 2, that iPerf was one of those things that was included in there. So let's click on iPerf. Now it says iPerf. Uh, well, the Ethernet interfaces up may yield uh, incorrect performance results. You know what? Let's go ahead. The last time I did this, we went ahead and did it with this. We're going to switch. Mm -mm. I'm going to show it to you on here. It's so much easier to see. Then we're going to come back. Now, to do our iPerf test, 
a couple of things have to work properly. We have to have an iperf endpoint. We have something have to have something to test to. Now, if I come over here and I switch over to our camera, here is our test accessory. If we're going to take the camera, we'll manually move in here a little bit so that you can see the test accessory. There it is. Now, if you have a link sprinter, you're going to say, man, that looks a lot like a link sprinter. Or if you have a pulse probe, you're going to say, well, that looks a lot like a pulse probe. It is the same hardware. But what they've done is they've put code in here that will set this up to operate as, a, as an iPerf endpoint. So this is PoE powered. I'll show you right there. Oh, no batteries. So this is running off of a PoE connection. Now what I've done is I've gone in and I've associated this with my Link Live account. So let me go out here. And bring up Link Live. And here's the thing. If you're not using Link Live, boy, are you missing out. Go out to www.link-live.com and set up an account. Now, once we set up an account in Link Live, we'll drag this over here. Here's Link Live. Here's my test results. So what we find is that, you know, for, here's one at 10.08 a.m. this morning. And that has been uploaded. Uh, we'll switch back to me. That's been uploaded out here. So what do I do? I go out and I set up a Link Live account. And then I come out here to Units. And I claim my AirCheck G2. How do I do that? Well, down here in the lower right-hand corner, I click on this. And it says these are all the different devices that we can add into Link Live. Our Link Sprinter, our AirCheck G2, our OneTouch AT, our Link Runner AT, and our test accessory. So what I would do is click on my AirCheck G2. It says, oh, plug that into an Ethernet port. I uh, come in here and select settings. Go to select device settings right down there. Select Link Live. So we're going to uh, tap on Link Live right there. And then we put in the MAC address. We come up here, we put in the last six digits of our MAC address. And what will happen is Link Live will start listening. And when you hit apply, it's going to go out and it's going to contact that. And it's going to associate your tester with your Link Live account. So now what, what happens? Every time, if I have it set to upload the test results, Every time I upload those test results, it comes back here and it says Mike Panaki's AirCheck G2. So it uploads those test results and puts that out there. Now what I did in this case was I went in and I associated my uh, test accessory with Link Live. And so in this case, it now puts this test accessory out here. So it, it will keep track of where my test accessory is. So what's the benefit of that? Well, let's say that you put the test accessory on a network that is not on your local network. The test accessory will phone home to Link Live and say, I am at 10.0.10.50. Then when your air check goes out to run the iPerf test, it goes out to Link Live and it says, what test accessories do I know about? And it will come back and say, I know about these test accessories. This allows you to find headless test accessories that are not on the same IP subnet you're on. Now, by default, the air check G2 will scan the local subnet looking for test accessories. So if you don't bother going in and associating anything with Link Live, or if you don't have access to Link to the internet from your network, as long as your test accessory and your error checker in the same IP subnet, you're in good shape.
The other thing you can do is we can come in and type in the IP address of the iPerf server. So you say, Mike, I downloaded version 2. I don't have a test accessory. I'm excited about using iPerf testing on here. How can I do it with something other than the test accessory? Well, in that case, what you do, let's dig down here through my windows. Minimize that one. Is here, I have an Ubuntu Linux box. Okay, this is a VM that's running here in the office. So what I did was I went in and I installed iPerf3 on this Linux box. I typed in sudo apt-get install iperf3. That installed the iperf3 software on that box. I've also done the same thing on my Mac. So I have iperf3, and we have to have iperf3 running on there for this to work. So now, if I go into my Linux box and I type in iperf3 minus s, this puts iperf in server mode. So it's now listening for a connection and it's listening for a connection on 5201. If I come in here and I click on this and I happen to know that the IP address of that Linux box is 108 and I hit done. What will happen is my AirCheck G2 is now going to establish a connection over port 5201 with this Linux box, and it's going to do an iPerf test. And this is going to be a bi-directional test. So I'm going to hit Start. So we can see on the Linux box that we have now established this connection. And we are sending this traffic, and it tells us our data rate. And it comes back, and it shows us what that rate is. So in this case, it says our max up speed was 95.9 megabits per second. And this one says 94. Now I'll tell you what, that happens to be about exactly 100% the uplink speed of the Ethernet connection on this unit. So what we're going to do is just to show you, we're going to turn off the air check. We're going to switch over to this camera. And I'm going to turn this air check back on. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to make sure that this test isn't running through the Ethernet port. Okay, We're going to make sure that this test is running through the wireless port. We're going to do that by disconnecting the Ethernet port just like it told us to. So we're going to hit Networks. We're going to hit Netgear 77 5G. We're going to touch on Connect. So we're going to let this connect. Okay. So we're done connecting. So I'm going to go to iperf test. We still have our 10.0.0.108 in up there. So now I'm going to hit Cancel Scan, I'm going to hit Start. Now you'll notice that uh, over there on our window we can see our data rates coming up. And in this case it says our max up speed is 196 megabits per second. So this is an interesting one because we're actually getting better throughput going through our wireless network than we did our wired because that now we did have an issue there where we unexpectedly closed our connection but I guess that's just how the client decided to close it but in this case we see that we got an average uplink speed of 133 megabits per second average down of 101 that's from out here in the studio talking to an access point back on my desk this gives us an idea of what our throughput is from this exact location. Okay. So that gives us a way that we can go and do that. Now I, I need to be careful because in this case I was running that over the same wireless network that my presentation's running over. So at the, that time when we were running that, 
There could have been a case where maybe you saw a problem with the audio or the video, and that's because I was pumping data at full line right through there. But what we find is that using both a Linux box like this or using the test accessory, we have to have that endpoint out there for us to connect to. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug in my Ethernet cable again. And we're going to go out to the home screen. We're going to go to settings. I'm going to go to device settings. I'm going to enable remote user interface. So right here I'm going to say remote user interface and I'll hit apply. Now at that point that screen blanks out. We're going to switch our video over. And what I'm going to do is come down here to VNC. And I'm going to reconnect to that box using VNC. All right, well, we're going to make sure we're going to restart that. All right, so the iPerf test. We need to have an endpoint. And the great advantage of these little test accessories is you could deploy these out through your network. So, for instance, the testing we did Monday, uh, the network was set up so that we had a Comcast modem that went to a firewall. So what we did was we put this test accessory outside of that firewall, plugged it right into the Comcast modem. So we could go around and test various locations within the facility going through the guest network, talking to that test accessory just outside the firewall. That gives us a way that we can go in and see, do we have the throughput that we expect from various locations? Now we'll go in and take a look at the iPerf configuration settings. In fact, well, let's see, I'm going to go into settings. Let's turn on that remote UI again. There we go. We'll minimize that. Okay, there's our remote UI again. So let's come back here. I always like to catch up every once in a while on the slides. So uh, we've connected to the network. We're going to talk about the log in just a second. And so what we found is that using the iPerf test, this allows us to measure the throughput on our network. We can use either a NetScout test accessory as an endpoint or an iPerf 3 server. Now, if you're going to, the advantage of the test accessories, these can be deployed out in various locations. You don't have to maintain yet another server out there. But if you have a server out there, you can load iPerf 3 on that server and run it. We see that this supports both TCP and UDP. Okay. So there's our, our throughput test. We can see what our upload test looks like. Now, if we back up, in this case, we are running TCP. TCP is going to run full throttle, all out. It's going to get the maximum throughput possible. Now, in our thresholds, we can set our minimum throughput we need. So if I say from this location, I need 10 megabits per second, then if we can't get 10 megabits per second, er, test fails. Where with UDP, that threshold we set is going to be the data rate we use. And we'll go in and take a look at that. Here's the UDP test. So in this case, I set my UDP throughput or data rate to 5 megabits per second. So we said our upload jitter was 0.0, .0 milliseconds. So this jitter is going to be the variation in inner packet arrival time. This is going to be very important when we're working with things like streaming video, when we're working with audio. This variation in inner packet arrival time is going to impact the quality of our signal. So if we have a large variation in inner packet arrival time, our jitter, it's going to degrade our audio quality. So if you're doing voice over your wireless network, this is going to be an important number, as is going to be loss. So it's important that we define those numbers so that we can set those in our thresholds. 
So we've tested our upload and download speed in this case. Okay, so our iPerf setup. So what do we do? We come out here, we click on settings. We go out and we find our iPerf settings. We touch that. And here we have our protocol. So we can say, are we going to do TCP or UDP? And this is going to depend on the application that we're testing. If we're looking at just, you know, if I'm going to be loading web pages, if I'm going to be downloading files, want to look at TCP. If I'm going to look at things like uh, streaming media or voice over wireless, then I care about UDP. So I would touch that, and this is going to show which protocol I want to use. Port number for iPerf3, it's always going to be 5201. Now you could change that port if you wanted to, but you would also need to change the port on the iPerf server as well. We have test duration. We can either run the test for 20 seconds, 60 seconds, or 120 seconds. And we can come in and set our thresholds. Now this goes back to, if we set our threshold to five megabits per second and we do a TCP test, as long as we can do better than five megabits per second, test will pass. If we do the test with UDP, we will send the traffic at five megabits per second. You want to make sure that you can support 10 megabits per second for UDP? Set the green threshold to 10 megabits per second. That is how the AirCheck G2 knows what data rate to use. Here we have our loss percentage. So if you're working with voice over IP, this is good. It's good to go back to your voice over IP provider and find out what is the maximum acceptable packet loss. You could set that to red. You could say, what is the preferred loss? Set that to green. Now, anything in between those two is going to be yellow. Here's the thing we always run into. If you have a problem with voice over IP on your wireless network, and you go back to the vendor and you say, I have a problem with voice over IP on my wireless network, they'll say it is your network. With the idea that it is very difficult for you to prove it is not your network. So if you go to them and say, what would be the optimal conditions for your application? Now I was at one location where the, the, they said, we want zero latency and we want z or zero packet loss and zero jitter. I said, I, you have no idea what you're talking about. There, we will oftentimes, as, especially when the network gets larger and larger, we will run into some loss and we will run into some jitter. So what is the number that you're looking for? Once we put those in, we can save this as a profile. We can create different profiles based on different applications, but this gives us a way to test our network and make sure that our network is complying with what we need to do to support that application. And the beautiful thing about the AirCheck G2 is you can carry this out to problem locations and find out, do those, does that location support it? Because now we're working with wireless and wireless can change from having a door open to a door closed. Monday, we were work looking at a specific area where people had connectivity problems. It was marginal when the solid core door was open into that room. Once we closed that door, we saw enough of a drop in signal that it, may, it pushed it just beyond marginal. I was at a hospital. We had a room in this far corner that had connectivity problems. Now, when all the doors were closed on all the hospital rooms, connection was okay. But when all the doors were open, those doors fell within a direct path between the infusion pump in that room and the access point hooked to the ceiling. So we had to pass through five solid core doors to get to that access point when all those doors were open. So these are all the conditions that can change within our environment in a wireless network. So being able to come in and set these parameters and run that during the day gives us a good idea of what the health of our network is. Captive portal. So let's take a look at that captive portal. You know what? As much as I would like to do that with the screen, I'm going to turn off the air check. We just got that going again. But we're going to unplug the Ethernet cable. It just it complains, and it's duly so. Uh, it will try and go through, well, we'll just leave the PowerPoint up. It'll try and go through the wired network because it is, 
uh, a little Linux box there. It's trying to use the route table to get out. So we're just going to come up a little bit and we are going to turn that on. And what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to show you how the captive portal works on here. So in this case, we're going to tap on networks and we're going to go to NPS office. Now NPS office is a network that has open security. We can see right there, the security says open. So I'm going to hit connect. Now, while we don't have a passphrase for this, we do have a captive portal. So I'm going to turn that captive portal on. I'm going to hit apply. So what's going to happen is this device is going to go out. It's going to establish a connection with the AP. It's going to get an IP address, and then it's going to bring up our captive portal. Okay, well, that's a bummer because it allowed us in. So we're going to stop. We're going to go to home. We're going to go to settings. We're going to go to networks. We're going to find that network. We're going to delete it. Now, what happened here? Well, what happened here was I still have this device in the router that says it is allowed to connect. So I'm just going to run in here real quick. I'm going to go into my hotspot. And we're going to delete that. There we go. All right, so let's do this again. Networks. NPS office, connect. So we're going to turn on our captive portal, hit apply. Well, We will make this work. Okay, we're going to hit connect. Live demos, always fun. We're going to hit apply. Aha, there we go. That's what we wanted. I need to make sure I was totally deleted out of there. But now what you notice, if we zoom in, right there, there's our login information. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come in here, I'm going to type, I'm going to go to login. I'm going to type in air check. And then go to password. I'll hit OK. So now it says I'm logged in. So I typed in my user ID and my password, and now I hit OK. So what we find is it says now the captive portal is complete. Our gateway is found. Our DHCP server is found. We found our targets. If we go to our log, 
we can see that here's our log information and this shows us our process of connecting and getting our DHCP address. So we we're able to connect successfully using that captive portal. So this works really well in guest, particularly guest networks where we need to be able to log in to that. Now that we've done that, we're gonna go ahead and go back to our remote user interface. We'll hit apply on there. We'll minimize that, we'll go back to me. And we'll come over here. We'll connect back up, we're back in business. Okay. So Captive Portal, new in version two, very handy little feature. So there we see there's our login. So now it says, uh, you know, it welcomes us, we're connected, and we're able to connect up. So the next section is channels. So with channels, this allows us to come in and start seeing, uh, you know, what's going on with our various channels out there. So if we go to our front screen and we touch on channels, this shows us for each of our bands what channels we have and what channels have access points on them. So in this case, I can see I've got three access points on channel one. I've got seven access points on channel six and six access points on channel 11. This is great because I don't have anything on uh, channels that I would not want to see in the 2.4 range. Like to see things on one, six and 11. This shows me that I've got one access point on channel 36 and six access points on channel 44. So it starts giving me a picture of you know, what we have out here in our five gigahertz band and those channels. Now, one of the new features in version two is overlap. So if I tap on overlap, it now displays this chart right here. So let's go over here and I'm going to go to channels and it shows me my channels. Blue is 802.11 traffic. Gray is non 802.11 traffic. This could be interference traffic. And if I tap on overlap, it brings up this nice chart right here. And this shows me each of my networks. It shows me what channel they're on. I see that I have a nice separation between those. So in this case, this is one of those cases where we'd want to turn it sideways just so that we can get a little bit better view. And I can change my band. So now I can see there's my 80 megahertz wide mic desk in there. I can see that in Uni 2, I don't have anything. Uni 3, nothing. There's Uni 1. So the channel overlap is kind of a nice way to get a nice graphical view of what APs, what networks are out there, and what channels are using. So what this reminds me of is I was in Vegas for a trade show this summer and I was looking at a chart and I noticed that somebody was running a 40 megahertz wide network in the 2.4 range, which is kind of rude because it's you, you really step on a lot of people's toes to do that. And I was talking to my wife on the phone at the time and she said, uh, what network is that? And I said, Netgear 46. And she goes, that's your network. I go, what? She said, that's your network. That's the router we use when we travel. And so what had happened, I went in and I had set that router to use the maximum bandwidth. Well, nowhere in that router does it say that if I'm going to use this bandwidth, I'm going to go to 40 megahertz wide channels. So I knocked it back down because I didn't want to interfere with anyone else. This gives us a nice graphical view of how wide those different networks are. So very neat little feature. If we tap on utilization, it takes us back here to this screen where we can see our utilization as the bars that are back there behind the access points. Now, if we touch on a channel, it shows us that channel. Now we have these arrows where we can move to the left, move to the right, but this shows us that on channel 11, we see five access points. 
So now I can click on View Details, and it's going to show me what do we see on Channel 11. Well, we see five APs, three clients, and one interferer. It shows me my channel utilization, so I can see how busy is this channel. I can see my signal level, I can see my noise, and I can see my SNR. And start seeing, you know, what's happening with this particular channel. There's our little blue triangles, so I can click on that and I can see what APs are out there. So I can see I've got this Netgear, I've got this router board, I've got this studio AP, I've got this Belkin out there. Well, let's see. If we click on the router board right there, it says the SSID is PR guest. Okay, well, you know what? I know that that is one of my devices, so I'm going to click on authorization. And that particular device is the, is a, what, the storeroom. Clear that out. I'll say storeroom AP, done. And that device is authorized. So I put a check mark next to it and I hit apply. So now if we come up here, uh, it's going to show us some information about that. And it says it's authorized and now says storeroom AP. So I can see, oh, there's the storeroom AP. So if I click on this one, okay, this particular one is Netgear 77. So that is the, that is the AP that's sitting at my desk but that's operating at the 2.4 gigahertz band. So in that case, I'm going to go into there, I'm going to go into authorization, I'm going to type alias name, hit back, I'm going to say mic desk, 2, I'll say uh, 2 underscore 4, just as a little note that that is the 2.4 gigahertz one there, and I'll hit done. I'm going to say that one's authorized as well. And I will not forget to hit apply. So now we see that, oh, there's the downstairs AP. There is uh, Mike Desk, there's storeroom. This Belkin, I click on that. We see that that has uh, Belkin and Belkin guests. Okay, those aren't mine, but they do belong to my neighbors. So I can see, oh, we've set that to neighbor. We'll go to this one. And we're, we've set that one to unauthorized. We're going to go ahead and set that one to neighbor as well. And there we go. So now we've got the little neighbor icon right there. That shows us that we've got a neighboring device. I could figure out who that belongs to. But by adding those names in there, as you're going along, if you add those names, it just makes it easier to see that for our access points right here, these are who we're seeing. And that's who we're seeing on channel 11. Clients, uh, there is, well, there's the Echo. There's a Samsung tablet that's connected in there. And I'm not sure what that device is. We come down here and click on the five gigahertz. Say view details. Shows us what APs are out there. We see that we've got this Asus right there. Okay, that particular one, that's the NetScout 5G. Okay, that's our studio on 5 gig, and that's authorized. All right, so now I click on APs. There's my desk. There's the studio AP. So going through these, it starts giving us a good picture of uh, what devices we have out there. We have our clients. We can see what clients are attached out here. 
and we can see if we have any interferers, which we don't. Okay. We could hit refresh. It's going to clear out what we've discovered. It's going to refresh that information. All right, so display, this talks about the display channel numbers in red indicate illegal channels. So part of the setup on your AirCheck G2 is to put what country you're in. So when you put the country, then it denotes which channels are legal and which channels are illegal. So based on your country, if you, are use, if you have APs out there on illegal channels, they'll show up in red. The blue portion is our 802.11 utilization. The gray portion is our non-802.11. Number at the top tells us how many APs we have on each channel. Black dots will denote how many APs we have unless we run out of room. Our average utilization is, con is calculated for each scan, and when we save it, it saves the average of each different scan. So there's our information. So there we drill in a little bit. We can see our uh, 802.11 and non-802.11. We drilled into a channel. It now shows us the number of active APs in there. So if we drill in even further, we can start getting an idea of what's going on. And this shows us those APs we discovered by adding in the aliases. It gives us a better way to find out which ones are out there. And we took a look at the clients. We can look at our channel utilization over time. So this is an example of where I did a file transfer and we could see our utilization went, went way up. Why do we usually end up looking at wireless? Because somebody's complaining. So if we come out here and we see very high utilization, that gives us an indicator that people are using a lot of bandwidth. That could be an issue. If we see a lot of non-802.11, this is where we're going to want to go in and take a look at our interferers and see what's happening. Our signal level, uh, this is going to show us the signal level of the strongest AP on that channel. So we could drill in and we could see which one is strongest. Okay. For our access points, we can come in and we can touch on access points. It's going to show us our access points. What's the difference between going to access points from the home screen and coming in from networks? It's the filter. If you come in from networks, it will filter on the network you selected. If you come in from access points, we see that we see all 13 access points. Again, you know, tapping an AP is going to show us detailed information about that AP. So we've been here before, but this is just kind of reiterating, you know, how do we get in there? How do we take a look at that information? So we can scroll down. I need to update this and put in the authorization, but we now see that we have the ability to add in the authorization and the alias name. Clients, in this case, what we've done is we've come in and we see we see clients two of six. We see that we're filtering on an AP's basic service set ID. So this is a case where we selected an AP and we said what clients are associated with that AP. So the AirCheck G2 is listening to what's going across the air and it's looking at who is associated with each different AP. So now we can see, you know, do we have a whole bunch of people associated with one AP and not very many associated with another? Our 802.11n information. We took a look at this a little bit earlier as well. And it's going to show us you know, our guard interval, our beam forming, our receive, our transmit rates, the number of streams, and the modulation and coding scheme that's being used. Same thing with AC. So again, if you're not getting the throughput you expect, we can come in here and look and see, are we using the settings that we expect? All right, that takes us to locate, which we're about 10 minutes to the hour. So we're going to go ahead and take our next break, and then we're going to come back. We're going to take a look at the locate feature and how we can go, go in and use this to locate devices. In fact, what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to plug a long patch cord in, and um, we're going to go in and do, I'll walk into the other room, 
and uh, you can see, you'll see the graph move up and down. All right. Uh, so we are going to take a break. We're going to come back, and then we're going to dig in. There's a question about interferers. We're going to dig in and talk about interferers. All right. So let's go ahead and take that break, and then we'll come back.